Welcome to this week's Friday Q&A for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. Every Friday I answer your questions here in this Q&A series. Today we have six questions, so let's start into it. The first question comes from the German channel and he basically was asking me, hey Daniel, can you make a video about the zoom effect from Mr. Alex Tech? Does it actually work on the iPad or not? Maybe you can download everything and, and show us how this works on the iPad. So this is a very good question. So some of the plugins work and some not. You'd really have to look into that and I will show you now in this video also how it works but just that you know we created a seamless transition pack for the iPad so you find this transition pack here also on my website and here under my channel and it's an easy navigation I created all of those little icons here that you can drag and drop just simply to the timeline and can use them straight away and those ones this pack uh, includes all of those transitions that work on the iPad because that's the problem some work some not and you have to go through different libraries and look if or make them yourself and just if you're considering to get the DaVinci Resolve iPad Masterclass this is a free bonus so if you look down here I have a couple of bonuses like the seamless transition pack or the film grain pack or the orange and teal LUTs pack all of this comes included in there and so I also made a video here on my channel where I showed you how to install the seamless transition pack for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad why because in this video I go through step by step how you can import those plugins to DaVinci resolve on the iPad but just to show you that it's actually that simple so for example for this transition pack I have this file here the DRFX so I go in here in my files app and I copy this file and where I have to go now is on my iPad to the DaVinci Resolve folder and now I go here to fusion and then templates and here I can place this exactly in here and you see here Phoenix transition pack I have it in here and then you have to just restart DaVinci Resolve and it will actually work. So question I created several videos in the past two years and I would like to clean up the storage by preserving the actual content I used for rendering the video. I understand that there are some export mechanics that I can use but it seems to copy all of the content including media that is not actually used in the videos. Is there a way a good easy way to trim down the size for an archival purpose? Yes. Yes, there is. So first let's talk about what you already figured out. It's probably the one thing. So let's say we have here our project and we go to our project database and let's say this test project I want to archive. I can just simply right click on it. So number one, if you just want to export a project, you can do this here. Export project and it's basically the project that you see sit in here. You can export somewhere and then this is just the skeleton. Same like in our um, Blackmagic Cloud. This is just the skeleton, not the footage. But we also have export project as archive. So you have to think about archive like this. In an archive, everything, all of our media, this was this. In an archive, all of our media is compressed into one file that you can preserve. And it's not quite what you want, but I show you for the viewers now what this will make. I can sign out, okay, here. I can choose an external drive. For this purpose, I will now just do test, 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 test and say open and now the next window opens up and here you can still change what you want to have included like the media files the render cache and the proxy media I recommend that you don't need the proxy media and you also don't need the render cache because those two can be quite big so you just keep the media files and now if you say okay it will create one file so now we have one file it's this one here and inside we have our project and all the media files inside of this project. So if that is good enough for you, you can just use that because it will be one file and it will be recognized through DaVinci Resolve. Doesn't matter if it's on the desktop or on the iPad. But what he is talking about is basically look at this project. I have one clip here and I'm not using any of the other clips here. I basically just drag and dropped one clip into my timeline and the rest of the media files I'm not using. Is there a way how I can export my project just with the media that I use because then for storage purpose it would be smaller on our hard drive. And yes there is. And for that we have to find a workaround again. Shortcuts. Open the shortcuts menu. Option, Command and K. In the shortcuts menu we, we look for media management and you have to give this a shortcut media management I gave it now the shortcut shift control and zero so whatever shortcut you want so I come in here hit shift control zero and I get this new window the same window also works on DaVinci Resolve on the desktop but there you can find it even in the drop down menu file and then just media management but we don't have this on the iPad that's why you have to open it like this and this whoa 
I think I will make a separate video for this whole window, but just for the purpose here, you can select and say whatever you want. So for our, our entire project, I can now say create a copy where I want to create my copy. I can say external hard drive, let's say downloads. And I already did this here on, onto one, two, three, but I just do this now again. Okay. And now I can say all media or just used media. And you will see now, if I select all media, it would be 201 MBs, used media only 42. Or you can even say, for example, in your media, in your timeline, when you placed a clip and you did cuts, you can even say use media and trim keeping. So for example, I will have 24 frames after my cuts to the right and after my cuts to the left, it will still keep that, but the rest it will just cut away and re-render those files. It will be even a more smaller file. In my case now, it's exactly the same because I just drag and drop this into the timeline. I haven't done any cuts, but if I would do cuts, I can make it even smaller there. And basically here, you can also just do this for one timeline or for select clips or work with clips. I will not go over all of that. I think I will make a separate video, but for you to answer the question, what you can do is entire project, used media file, select the folder where you want to copy it and then just hit start. I already did this. So I created the following folder, one, two, three. And the problem here is, and I tested this on desktop too, it's not a problem from the iPad, it's just this one window. It only creates a folder with all the media files. It doesn't create the project file. So what you still have to do is, you have to come back here, back to the project manager and now right click on your project and say just export project and save that one to the same folder, like here in this case, this folder, and then hit save. And now if you look into the file, I have now my media files and just the ones that we use and my project file here that I can save onto an external drive to for archive purpose. Can I import power grades on DaVinci Resolve for the iPad? Yes, and because of that question, I made a video like two or three days ago and I show everything in this video, import, export, power grades. So just watch that one from three days ago. I have another concern. You say about installing LUTs. I would like to know if there's a possibility to, like in LumaFusion, to install the Fab Filter plugin. I have them in DaVinci Resolve for my Mac, but I, I don't see them in the iPad version as in Luma. Thank you very much. So <laughs> when Logic Pro and Final Cut Pro for the iPad came out, I made a video, this one here, the funny thing with the... <laughs> so basically Logic Pro iPad just destroyed Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve forever. Um, the reason why is, and I won't, I won't go into deep now because this is like a 10 minute video where I explain everything in detail, why it works, what can work and what shouldn't work. You are talking about those um, Fairlight plugins like VST plugins and all this kind of things. I will answer all of this in that video. So if you want to know what kind of plugins could work in the future and which one don't, look into this video. I explained that there and why it's already working in LumaFusion and why it's already working in Logic Pro. So you do have a blade tool in the edit page. Thank you again. Last week I answered the question, how do you use the blade tool if you don't have a keyboard in the edit page? And I basically said there is no blade tool here on my view. And I looked into it again on my iPad. I can't find the blade tool. Maybe I'm just blind. So please send me a screenshot or whatever. I looked into the desktop version and yes, on the desktop version, there is a blade tool. And now of course you could come into the shortcuts menu, give the blade tool a keyboard shortcut. But if you have a keyboard anyway, then I would rather give the shortcut for a cut because that's what I use right cut 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 on the shortcut so but if you don't have a keyboard and you just use your iPad like this then you don't really have the blade tool or I don't really see it another great video one question when you were talking about the pages which we can turn on with the shortcuts however when we fully close DaVinci Resolve and reopen we have to use the shortcut again why can they not stay as the same okay uh, we had this question a couple of times now but again people just discovering the channel other people are already here on this journey for the last six months basically if you just would watch this Q&A series, you would get so many answers. But to make it simple again, they are officially not launched. That's the answer. Okay, that's it for this week's Q&A for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. If you have questions, drop them here under this video and I will answer those questions in the next Q&A Friday next week. I hope you have an amazing weekend in front of us and see us probably tomorrow next video. Yeah, I'm Daniel. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe, dingle dingle the bam bang gong, all the things. And yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.